busy mama it is the holiday season which means one gathering after another which is absolutely fun but sometimes if not planned correctly it can become overwhelming and i am here to tell you five tips that definitely help me not get as overwhelmed as i usually get when having a gathering here at my house and most importantly i get to enjoy the company that's actually at my house and not end up in the kitchen the entire day let's just dive in the first tip your guest list who are you going to invite for this specific gathering and what is the purpose of it i used to be one of these people that when having a gathering the more the merrier i would tell my family and tell my friends and be like oh i have a big backyard i'm gonna do this and by the end of the day i'm just exhausted and overwhelmed and i'm like did i say hi to this person did i say hello did i get to chat with this person and then after the gathering i end up messaging a bunch of people i'm like i'm so sorry i didn't get to say hi or i didn't get to say hello or sit with you and it just becomes a huge chaos instead of it being spending time with the people who i care about so I highly suggest looking at your guest list from a perspective of what is the purpose of this gathering? Is this a purpose of us to spend some time with family or is it a purpose is to spend some time with friends? Which friends, which group of friends? Are they work friends? Are they like your regular friends? Are they best friends from college? Or is the purpose of this gathering for the kids themselves? Do we want the kids to have fun? Is it focused? Do we want to invite those friends that have kids with the same age group as our kids? So those are all things to consider when thinking about your guest list and keep it to a minimum as much as you can because if you keep your guest list small, you will have time to spend with each of your guests and actually enjoy their company. So I think something that COVID has taught us is like smaller gatherings is exactly what's happening now. And I think a lot of people actually realize the beauty of intimate gatherings. So that's exactly what you should be thinking about with your guest list. I'll give you a good example of something that just passed me these last couple of weeks, which is my kids' birthday parties. My kids' birthdays are five days apart and one of them turned one and the other turned seven. So completely different age gaps. For my baby who turned one, I decided to keep his guest list for his party just family. I was thinking about the guest of honor. That's him. He doesn't care for anything. He wouldn't even notice if we had a party or if we didn't. He actually did notice and he had a lot of fun. He could totally tell the attention was on him, which was so cute. But at the time of me planning his birthday, I did not think he would care or enjoy anything. But I really do think that he ended up enjoying the gathering and enjoying his birthday because we kept it so intimate that it was just family and everyone gave him so much attention and played with him and he was just having such a great time. When I was in the planning phase of his birthday, I was thinking about him as the guest of honor. I was thinking, what would Zayden like? And I was like, nothing. He doesn't care. But I was thinking, okay, later on, what would Zayden appreciate? And I thought later on, Zayden would probably appreciate pictures of his first birthday to see that we actually cared and we gave him a birthday and to see who showed up to his birthday. So he has pictures with the grandparents, he has pictures with his aunts and his uncle, and it, it was such a good day for him. And I know that that's something he's gonna look at forever and enjoy those pictures. So because I was thinking of my guest of honor in this case, I made it all about what Zayden likes or what Zayden would like later on. So that's kind of a way for you to think about, like if you're having a gathering, what is the purpose of that gathering? And if there's a guest of honor, what would the guest of honor enjoy? And if there isn't a guest of honor, like it's just Thanksgiving or just a holiday gathering, think about the group of people that would get along good during the gathering and end up having a good time together. Now, another example about this is my daughter's birthday, which was five days after my son's first birthday. She's seven. All she cares about is playing and having fun. And I was thinking of her as the guest of honor. And I literally just decided to take her and her girlfriends to the park and cut a cake. And it was so simple. And she loved it. But again, I was thinking about her, what would she enjoy? And I kept it minimum, like which friends are close to her in her life right now. And those are the people we invited. And that was it. Tip number two, which kind of ties up to tip number one, is your seating arrangement. 
where are you gonna host your party? Is it gonna be in your backyard? Is it gonna be outdoor? What's the weather gonna be like? You should look into that. I made the biggest mistake about three years ago of hosting a party of like 30 people and I thought, oh, I have a big backyard, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fun and I decorated and everything and it got so cold. It got so cold, everyone had to come inside. My house was so congested and I was like, oh my God, never again. I'm just not gonna trust the weather like that. But I realized that it's not a matter of trusting the weather, it's a matter of planning. If you check the weather ahead of time and you plan for a little bit extra wiggle room, you would know whether or not you should have it indoor or outdoor. And just make sure you have a seat for every person you plan to invite. So for this, I'm gonna take like my living room, for example. If I was hosting a dinner for a group of friends, I wanna make sure I literally have seats for everybody. Because if everybody's seated, everyone is relaxed, everyone is conversating, we're not split between a few rooms, we're not like awkwardly standing in the corner. So what I like to do is literally walk back, look at my living room and literally count. If this person sits here and this person sits here and this person sits here, blah, blah, blah. And it really helps me realize if I have enough space for everyone to be comfortable. When I have guests in my house, I have learned that I want them to be comfortable. I want them to sit down, lean back, have a cup of tea, chat casually. And I feel like space and seatings have a lot to do with that. Tip number three, which will help you decide on tip number one and tip number two. The number of gatherings you can have for a particular life event that's going on in your life right now. You don't have to have one big gathering for Thanksgiving or even for your wedding or even for a birthday. You can easily break your gatherings up based on the group of people. Just like I did with my kid's birthday, I had Zayden's birthday be family only and I had Myra's birthday be her friends only because I knew that if I combined both their birthdays, I would have to invite both groups of people and that would have been too much for me. It was easier for me to split them knowing what would Zayden care about and what would Myra care about. You can apply this idea to any kind of gathering or any kind of social events coming upon you. For example, Thanksgiving. You can have a Thanksgiving for family and then a Friendsgiving with your friends. And if you have such a big family, like your family and your husband's family are just way too big, you can have a Thanksgiving with your family and then you can have another Thanksgiving with your in-laws. And then with Friendsgiving, you can have a few Friendsgivings. I find that to be more entertaining and more enjoyable than having one big, big potluck or one big gathering that just consumes you in the planning process. So consider breaking up your parties however way you can so you can enjoy the company. Tip number four, the decor. No matter what a small of a gathering you have or what the reason is, nowadays we want a decor or a theme for everything. At least I do. I always set up at least some cute frames or some kind of like trays with treats or anything that I want to prepare for that particular gathering. And it took me a long time to actually realize how much I can set up in advance. I know this is easier said than done and I know we've heard this so many times, but let's talk about it for a minute, okay? First of all, there is so much that we put aside that we think, oh, you know what? I'll just put this out, it will take one minute. And you know what? I'll set the table, it will take two minutes. And then, oh, I need tape to hang this and that will take another two minutes. But when you add up all these minutes, it actually takes up half your day on the day of your gatherings, when all these things could really be done like a lot sooner than that. I feel like everything I just said about the decor, everyone knows, but here is my tip. Don't just take stuff out actually set up the stuff because what I used to do is go in my garage, pull out everything that I think I want to use for this gathering and I just have it sitting outside my table. And like on the day of, I'll just lay everything out and you know, hang this and do that. But what I started doing is actually putting stuff out. Like as I take one piece out of my garage, I actually come here and I actually hang it. And I actually took down my drapes for Zidim's birthday, like a few days before. And I actually take out the dishes and set up the table. If I actually do that prior, you would realize how many things you come across that you miss throughout the process that makes you think, oh, I need tape. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. 
And if all that is happening on the day of your gathering, of course, it takes away from your time to actually prepare things that must be prepared on the day of, which adds to your stress level and like nobody wants that. So take it from me on your next gathering, set up everything to the fullest as much as you can a few days before your gathering and you will thank me later. It will make a huge difference. Last but certainly not least, because there is no gathering without it, the food. When it comes to a gathering and cooking, I tend to do the same thing when it comes to decor. I say, oh, I'll fry this right before, I'll warm this up right before, and before you know it, I'm stuck in the kitchen for like 45 minutes while everyone thinks the food is about to come out and it's not quite ready as I thought it was. So one thing I learned is to simplify my menu as much as I can and just make more quantities of less dishes. For example, instead of having two or three appetizers, I just make one appetizer but with larger quantity because that's simply enough for everybody. The other thing that I like to do is pick the dishes that I would make based on the fact of how much I can complete them up until it's dinner time. I don't know if that made sense, but for example, if I have to fry something that has to be fried right before it's being eaten, the chances are I'm not gonna make that because I don't wanna be in the kitchen frying right before dinner, okay? So I pick dishes that I know can easily be warmed up later on. And then similar to the decor, I do the same thing. I finish my dishes completely. I put them in serving trays and I put my serving trays in the oven on warm. And you have to make sure that your serving trays are oven safe for you to do that but when i do that and i leave them in the oven on warm i literally just take them out of the oven and put them on the table and it's so easy and dinner is ready in like 10 minutes instead of me being stuck in the kitchen forever trying to get everything out that's all i wanted to share with you mamas about how to host a party with more peace of mind with less stress and actually enjoy your company I personally applied all these rules the last couple of days of my life with my kids' birthdays and I found them to work great. I absolutely enjoyed their birthdays and I thought, oh my God, I have to share that with you because of the holiday season. I know how overwhelming gatherings can get and if you follow these tips, I promise you're going to enjoy the process so much more. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any additional ideas you want to share with anyone who's watching this video, go ahead and leave it in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out, especially if you want to see more encouraging videos for busy mamas like you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I will say bye for now, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.